Hey guys, in May I was once again taking part in Escape the Ridaton made by Lexi. It is a competitive team-based Ridaton where each team is trying to escape first by completing reading prompts. And this year we were escaping from the Black Cat Carnival, which is the main inspiration behind my May reading journal team. And to make things more difficult for myself, I decided to go 3D. And I spent forever <laughs> trying to figure out a way to do this. I even bought a book on 3D paper folding techniques, but I soon realized that while it was a great book, it showed you only 90 degree folds like you see in greeting cards and such and not the full 180 degree folds I needed, so I'll have to return that. But after some more digging around internet, I found a template for Carnival Tent, only it was made for kids. I bought it anyway and retraced the lines so I would get clean template I could draw anything on. It took me forever guys, but I am so glad I figured that out. So for my carnival tent I went with a simple red and white design with few windows and the door. And I chose this thick paper. It is supposed to be for poster color. but I hoped it would work with watercolor as well. It didn't. <laughs> the paint was spreading quite a lot and it was not drying at all. To be honest, I might have accidentally used the wrong side of paper, but I also might have not. I have no idea what was going on. Anyway. I also made a cute little ticket boot and a sign and a foldable background as well with Ferris wheel. For this I used the paper from my previous bullet journal since these are the same and it took watercolors way better. I have here a little sky, some trees and few cards on Ferris wheel for color. I did the first layer in watercolors and then I finished with color pencils and white gel pen. Despite it looking terrible at first, I love how it ended up looking. And when I got an idea about the Escape the Ridaton sign on top of that, I was so so proud of myself. Here I am trying to add yellowing to the tent and I am doing my best to paint in between red lines to avoid colors seeping into each other. But everything started to mix together even when I let it dry for quite a while. So I finished this with color pencils as well. I added lots of yellows and browns and made it all dirty looking. I wanted my circles to look dingy is that a word <laughs> okay guys so while you watch me working on this i just want to say that my may reading wrap up will be split into two videos because first only the setup took a lot of time and this video would be way way too long second I had so so little time to work on it and I finished 16 books and manga in May. 16. <laughs> so instead of me trying to make spreads for everything in very little time, stressing about it and then not being happy with what I make, I'd rather take my time and create what I like. Which means in this video I am showing you my full setup and I will talk about one of my favorite books from May and in the second video I will be talking about all 15 other books and doing all the spreads. Because otherwise I have no idea how to solve this issue and I want to have a video for you guys this week. Ok, back to the setup. I have had this paper pad for a long time and it is finally time to use it. I am choosing this yellow checkered pattern for the background. Here is everything I made for this spread. I love how all of this turned out. First I am adding the ferris wheel background. I have not measured anything and it shows <laughs> 
but I was just so done with it all. There was a lot of painting and waiting involved after every single thing I glued in the journal and I just wanted it to be done. <laughs> it was so stressful and time consuming and I am so glad it all worked out in the end. Now I am placing in the tent. It barely fits <laughs> without sticking out, but I am so happy with it. It was worth all the trouble. Now the small pieces. I used a piece of the leftover paper and glued in the yellow checkered pattern paper to blend it in. And I bent the ends and glued them to the ticket boot and to the ferris wheel. And guys, I have no idea what I am doing, but it somehow works. <laughs> Tada! So, so cute. Now this background looks a bit sparse. I started coloring some of it with pencils, but I need to think about it some more, so I will be finishing it in the next video. But I still love it so, so much. On to the next page. Here I am adding a patterned paper as well and the official map made by Lexi. I am folding it in four sections and gluing only one of them onto the paper so I can fold and unfold the map. On the right side I am adding tickets with prompts we were fulfilling during the game. These were made by Manda Maid and she was so lovely to let me use them in my journal as well. She even allowed me to change colors to fit my theme and I am so so grateful. Her channel is linked in the description. She makes reading journal videos as well and you should definitely check them out. These are made in a way that you can glue books you read for each prompt onto the back side. How clever is that? <laughs> There are also books I read for none of these prompts, so they won't be added here, but I will have a review spread for each one. And you have a little sneak peek of what everything I read in May. I read so much, I had to take a break from readathons for June, even though I was so excited about the amazing readathon. I will join maybe next year. This was my, I think, third month in a row doing monthly changes and it is a lot guys, especially with full-time job and a YouTube channel. <laughs> I prepared this pocket in Canva to hold all the tickets and I saw this pocket idea also in Manda Maid's journal. How cute is that? Now let's add the calendar and the list of all the books I read. I don't think I talked about my system in a while, so here it is. I number each of the books I read and they all keep their number for the year. This month I finally finished a book I was reading since February and it got number 5 when I started reading it, so it has number 5 now as well. And then I jumped to 39 because my last book I read in April was numbered 38. And I color in the number as well as the title when the book is finished in that month. If I only started it, I leave the number uncolored. And I mark dates. I read each book in the calendar with the same color. It is an easy way for me to track how many books I read during the year. Do I make sense? Probably not. Is it necessary? Not at all. But I love systems and making life more difficult for myself. Anyway, just to sum it up, I assign each book a number and when it is finished, I color the number in. That's it. <laughs> and I am trying to make this spread simpler because the calendar has lots of details, but this time it is way too sparse for my taste, so I am adding a little bit of detail. Now, finally, a book review. I read City of Nightmares and I was so surprised with how much I loved this book. It is a young adult paranormal urban fantasy where anyone can transform into their own nightmare anytime during their sleep. The main character, Ness, is 
terrified of nightmares and also of becoming one because her own sister turned into a man-eating spider and slaughtered her way through the town. But of course, she has to deal with nightmares every single day. To be honest, I found the main character quite annoying. <laughs> the author was trying to portray her fear and grief, but it felt like I was reading the same sentence again and again to the point I skipped some lines, which I never do. Despite that, I enjoyed the book a lot. There was also this curse about vampires and abusive relationships and why the society romanticizes them. There is also some kind of relationship between our main character and a vampire and I love how the author didn't go straight to oh my god he's a vampire but screw my fears I love him and pine for him and I can't stop thinking about him and all that shit we get in so many books. But they instead have a very nice friendly relationship so far. There is mystery, politics, gangs, cults, cute vampires with emotional baggage, you name it, and one of the revelations at the end. So, so good. And because you can become any type of nightmare, from pterodactyl to germs, I went crazy with this spread as well and added bunch of seemingly unrelated stickers and it turned out so good. I had such a great time looking through my stickers and combining them together. Let's do a quick flip through of everything I've made so far. I started to color in the background here, but it needs much more work still. I adore how this looks and I am so, so happy I chose to do this. There will be a part two linked when it goes live. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. In the meantime, here is one of my favorite wrap ups. See you next time. Bye.